questions for that to kick off um, on all sides. I'm just going to share a screen. Uh, there we go. Right. So um, good morning and welcome um, to everyone tuning in um, on the live stream. Uh, big shout out to Gordon. He's actually here with me in the room, in the Zoom room where we where it all happens. Um, so feel free to um, check your LinkedIn messages because there might be a message from me um, inviting you to the Zoom meeting. Uh, it's, you, you're not too late yet. I'll still let you in the room, but um, there's a couple of others, uh, a couple of AI pilots and things in the room as well, not missing out. So maybe they're going to catch up on the replays. But today, um, yeah, just so welcome again. This is the LinkedIn Lead Generation Masterclass. It's a weekly um, masterclass that I run every Tuesday morning, nine o'clock. And it's a third week program. Um, so we look at um, target target audience on LinkedIn, who you need to be connecting with. Um, and then today's session is all about optimizing your personal LinkedIn profile to make sure it's speaking to that target market. So it's quite an important piece uh, in the Leadif roadmap. And then um, thirdly, um, the next next week, we're going to be looking into more LinkedIn automation stuff, which is kind of what, what we do. We've got a sales um, engagement software tool that helps us to kind of really automate all our processes on LinkedIn and give you maximum visibility. And then the the fourth fourth piece is all to do with email. So um, connecting with people on LinkedIn is great, but when you can start to take the conversation and move the conversation off into email, um, it's kind of another opportunity. Um, some people aren't very responsive on LinkedIn, but if you've got their email address and you can reach out to them on email, um, there's some really good, good stuff you can do to kind of nurture those connections. Um, step five is all about content. So putting content out there into the um, the platform, LinkedIn, uh, and getting seen. So that generates inbound inquiries. So it's not always outbound, but we can do a bit of inbound work as well based on content. Um, so that's driven around a 13-week cycle of posting content. Um, video content is really good. Polls, engaging um, posts. So that, that week's really good at kind of looking at, thinking about what you might post and and, and how to kind of set you apart as an industry leader. Um, and then the final, uh, well, it's not the final, but um, week six, it's the kind of final strategy in, in the, the roadmap that we've got is all about um, systems, making sure you've got your, your calendly set up correctly or other calendar um, uh, tools, because obviously all your leads are going to be coming in. You need to be um, driving them into this funnel. Um, so we look at um, how to automate that whole process, make sure we've got a database of leads that leads are not getting um, forgotten. So um, my name is Alex Smith. I'm the founder of Leadith. And um, that's kind of what Leadith does. We take three people through all those steps, either do it for them, do it with them, or let them do it themselves and muddle through with some of the training that I've pr produced. Um, but today's focus is going from zero to LinkedIn hero. It's all about optimizing your um, LinkedIn profile. Um, so basically maximizing um, what you do. So the two main takeaways for today um, in this masterclass will be, number one, why you should look at um, LinkedIn as a new channel of communication between you and your leads. OK, that's going to be the, the first takeaway. The second takeaway is we're going to look at how to optimize your profile and get it ready for lead generation. Um, quite often I get approached by people on LinkedIn and their profiles. I mean, um, they have a, a cut off headshot, um, no, no banner image. It's all generic. And you think, you know, what is this person about? What are they up to? Um, it's just not clear. So we're going to kind of clarify all of that today. So a couple of things that we're going to learn, um, how your profile picture should look. Um, I'm no expert, but I've had a LinkedIn profile for around about 15 years now. And uh, I've kind of circled my LinkedIn photos for, for maximum engagement. And there's some tools that we're going to dip into that can really help you to kind of do that on autopilot as well um, using AI. It kind of analyzes your face, analyzes the crop, how the photo looks. It's quite clever stuff. Um, we'll look at profile summaries and just um, letting your creativity loose um, and also using things like ChatGPT. That can be a really helpful tool to kind of write your profile for you if you're not quite sure um, with what, what to put, kind of what words to talk about yourself. And then um, all this builds up to having what, what LinkedIn call an all-star profile is where you basically complete the LinkedIn profile as much as possible. So there's lots of different modes that we can enable and things to can really help your, your profile start flying. So a LinkedIn profile, um, it's it's used for lots of different things. Um, but the main um, thing a lot of people use it for is for looking for new job opportunities. Um, so when you kind of sharpen your, your LinkedIn profile, you kind of inviting potential um, headhunters to come and find you for a, a new job role or a job opportunity. Um, 
Leadif itself is a sales engagement platform and um, it helps clients to generate new leads with ease, um, no matter how familiar they are with, say, sales. So that's kind of what, what Leadif is all about. Um, when I started Leadif back in 2019, um, kind of just before COVID, um, the main focus was LinkedIn outreach. Uh, and obviously that's kind of grown now. We're now looking at kind of email outreach and social media content in general. So it's kind of a platform that's been growing. Um, just try not to be too reliant on LinkedIn. And mindful it is kind of the main thing, um, but um, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket just in case LinkedIn, um, something happens, you know, so, so I, I'm kind of diversifying with email as well. So why, uh, well, what, what is LinkedIn and why is it so important for those of you who are kind of new into this? I'm just going to explain some of the, the, the key key things here about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, um, it sits at a, at a whopping 850 million users, and that's spread over um, all across the, the globe, you know, over 200 countries. So it's a huge um, opportunity and it's a huge platform to be connecting with um, potentially uh, B2B people, people, professionals, people in business. Um, so it's a professional social networking platform, and it's going to help you to build um, up your network of connections, help you to share insights with um, people in the corporate world. Um, and it generally just makes um, the sharing of that professional knowledge a whole lot easier. LinkedIn's also got a big focus about learning. Um, so some of the premium and sales navigator tiers give you access to this kind of LinkedIn learning platform where you can learn new skills and um, and focus on a bit of professional development. So um, it's great for anyone looking for a job. It's great for anyone looking to um, grow their professional career. Um, and it's great for people to find um, new clients. Um, and when you can start to understand it, you can leverage it for um, maximum effect. Another stat here, um, 2020, uh, 2003, that's when LinkedIn um, was started. Um, it celebrated its 20th birthday in May. Um, so what a milestone. Um, it's kind of stood the test of time for the last 20 years, uh, hopefully many more years to come. Um, but back then, um, the purpose of LinkedIn was just to be a um, host your CV online. That's that's its main main function. It's now grown. OK, and there were two decisions that um, would change the course of the LinkedIn platform. The first one was 2006, where they released the public profile feature. And that's where they made your um, LinkedIn profile publicly accessible. So it was always just closed within networks. Um, but 2006 changed it. Um, it really kind of grew um, exponentially um, at that point. Um, and then another another big, big, big thing was eight, um, well, not eight years, four, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, about five years later, um, after it was launched, LinkedIn went global. So um, that's when it um, pushed it out to other countries and things. Uh, and that was a huge, just made a huge impact going that, that global. So um, how do you know LinkedIn's right for you? Um, obviously, um, we've mentioned it quite a lot. Um, it's a professional network. You're going to have B2B people on there, people interested in business, um, leaders, all that sort of stuff is um, flowing in um, LinkedIn more so than any other platform, which is why it's my go-to. If I was to start a new business and it was B2B, I would be putting all my efforts into LinkedIn, no doubt about it. Sorry if I'm a bit rough this morning. Um, uh, hay fever struck me down this morning. I went for a run yesterday, and it, it um, must be uh, some side effects from the from the run. So uh, apologies for the voice today, but uh, let's keep going uh, and push on through. I've got a, a big bottle of water here to keep me going, so that might ease the pain. Right. So um, what's LinkedIn, and what what can um, what can you do with LinkedIn? So. As I said, LinkedIn, it was initially created to help people connect with other professionals in the same industry to give each other recommendations. And obviously, since that big public profiles release um, in 2006, um, it's now become your digital CV. So people can um, see what you've been up to, have a look at your experience and um, keep a, keep an eye on your, your career. Um, and LinkedIn is also great for anyone who's just out of university or education and looking maybe to start their career, then LinkedIn is a really great place for them to kind of start to um, lay that foundation and um, get stuck in with um, the types of companies that you want to be following in and um, learning lots of new new things. So it's great for, for everyone. So with LinkedIn, 
what can we do? Um, well, number one, we can connect with the world. Obviously, it's a global network. And um, it means that we don't have to, to, to travel, you know, think about what LinkedIn's doing for the carbon footprint of the world and um, Zoom and all this modern technology. It's really good because it helps us to keep in touch with friends, classmates, colleagues that we know exactly what they've been up to and they know what we're up to. So it's um, just a really good connector. Uh, and I love the sense of um, connecting. Um, I've always been a connector, um, bringing people together. Um, aggregating those um those connections has been great i, lo I love i love the pioneering pioneering stages of businesses where you're um creating something new uh, and joining the dots and bringing people together it's really powerful um secondly um it's really good as a lead gen tool um so obviously having this network of several thousand connections basically means you can reach absolutely anyone um you know there's no one kind of more than two connections away from you so it really makes um the whole system um ecosystem really concise and you know if i want to connect with um the ceo of a, a fairly large corporate you know there's there's possibilities i'm only one person away from that that connection so it means in terms of lead gen we're really kind of blasting our efforts really quickly to try and get to the right people so it saves time, saves resources. And thirdly, um, one of the biggest key things um, that you'd want to use LinkedIn is to build up your personal brand. Um, so sharing your expertise and your story um, with other with others, um, that's going to be, you know, um, really helping you to kind of build out your personal brand. The most important thing um, to remember here is, is just build this network. LinkedIn allow you to connect with up to 100 people per week. So I say this time and time again, when people thinking about coming on board with Leadif, um, every week that is passing, you know, potentially that's 100 people there that you have not yet connected with and you could connect to. Obviously, there's a cap on how many people uh, sits around about 20, 25,000 people you can have in your first degree network, which is a lifetime of, you know, connections. I've only just hit 10,000 connections on LinkedIn. Um, and it's all been people that I've reached out to so I very rarely accept connection requests if they're people that are in my target audience so I'm building out all my first degree connections I've got a family and a couple of friends in there as well but the bulk of my connections are people that I've searched for job roles that I've wanted to connect with people that are kind of way above me um so yeah I'm building out that network so if you've not started by um connecting with those 100 people every single week um you're kind of doing yourself um, out of lots of potential business because out of those hundred you know some of those are going to be very interested in wanting to work with you so it's important to remember we need to be building that network just to explain the degrees of connections because um you uh, depends where people are at in, in terms of their linkedin understanding now this green circle here is what we call our first degree network so these are the people that are immediately already connected to us we've accepted a connection request we can freely talk to them, send them messages and do lots of stuff. We then have this yellow circle and the yellow circle is what we call our second degree connection. And then the third degree is what we call our third degree, uh, the third circle, the red circle there is called our third degree of connections. So yeah, so second degree people are people that are connected, uh, second degree are people that we are connected to via our first degree and third degree um, those are the people that are connected to our second degree connections. So everyone is connected, um, but ultimately it's either one degree away or two degrees away. Um, so you're not never too far away from, from uh, connecting to anybody on LinkedIn, ultimately. So going back to um, some of the benefits and uh, why we use um, LinkedIn, obviously um, it helps us to have a mutual connection so we can serve the bridge and the gap between that person and the other we're trying to connect with. So a second degree connection can be vital. It can help us to connect with other people. And often people will ask me for an introduction because someone else is in my network. Alex, could you introduce me to this person? And that's when we can go back to those people and say, you know, yeah, I know this person quite well. I've worked with them. Um, let's see if we can get a connection with that other person who they know. Uh, and it works really well, you know, because it's it's very much a personal thing. So um, think about expanding your network um, even further, connecting to people. Don't be worried about um, connecting with um, mass numbers. A lot, a lot of people think, how can I service so many relationships? You know, um, it's not about that. At this stage, we're building an audience. So think of it as building an audience. If there's someone in your network as you're connecting to them, you think, wow, there's a lot of synergy here. 
Now, I think I'd like to get to know this person a little bit better than just the first degree connection. That's great because what you can do is offer to um, have a you know a 15 minute catch up call or it could be a Zoom meeting or something like that with that person. I use Calendly for that. It's really good. Um, it sends out the invites. They can see my calendar. They can see my availability. And I, I, and I set it as a 15 minute um, discussion, basically introductory call just to get to know one another a little bit better. But what I've also recently done is actually include my um, gains. So gains is my my goals, uh, my accomplishments, my interests, my networks, and my skills, gains. So I actually send an A4 piece of paper to them. Uh, it's a PDF uh, via email before the meeting. So they understand what am I about and what do I want um what do I want uh, to achieve in life? And that gives um, real clarity and focus to the meeting because they don't need to ask my backstory because they've already had it before the meeting. So you can be very precise in your 15 minute meeting with them. And obviously, if you need to book a, another longer meeting, you can. But LinkedIn is really powerful. So um, the way we find prospects on LinkedIn, um, have a look at our previous episode last week. That will um, talk to you about um where we can find all these different prospects. Um, so there's lots of different filters we can use to search for different job roles, company sizes, and, and people like that. But back to the profiles, um, we're going to now add some life to your own profile. Yep, now's the time to um, to dip into your LinkedIn if you're not already on it, and um, just make some notes. Uh, think about your profile. Have a look at these little improvements that you can make. So the profile picture, um, believe it or not, um, I still get um, people that come um, via my second degree connections that I see them and they they haven't got a, a profile picture visible or they're locked up. You know, for some reasons, they might not want their profile picture public because um, there could be some instances where that, that might be the case. But, um, you know, if you're walking down the street, you don't cover yourself up. You know, you, you have yourself on display, on show. We want people to see you, to see your unique profile and that's um very important so we're going to go ahead and see how um we can kind of um uh improve that profile photo so there's, lot, there's lots of tools that i'm going to show um towards the end of this masterclass, um and i'm also going to share them on the on the notes if you want a copy but um make sure people get a clear view of your face and there's nothing worse than being cropped um with your head being cropped up at the top or your chin being cropped or you're slightly to the side okay so it's important to make sure that that photo that they've got a clear view of your face um, i just noticed as i was saying that my camera normally follows me around so it, um, uh, i'll make sure it's on the follow mode because then that's uh make sure i'm clearly in shot with you on the masterclass. so there we go that's me and um, keep it simple um so always good to have an idea when it comes to your profile image clear and concise is the, is the name of the game um, just for a test for probably this quarter, I've put a fancy quirky blue and white background color. Um, and I've used a, a tool called Pick of Me. Um, if you Google Pick of Me, um, it basically takes your social media picture, um, cuts it away from whatever background you previously had, and adds um, some nice geometric patterns or different kind, kinds of effects onto your uh, profile image, which is quite quirky. Um, so that's why I did that. And um, certainly my profile picture stands out a lot more than others. So if you just had a plain white background, um, I think my picture will be the one that stands out. It's a bit more contrasting. Um, so that's why I've done that. Um, but I'm only just doing it for a test for a quarter just to see the results, um, see the number of um, more connections and things that, that might happen as a result of it. Um, adding a bit more life to your profile photo. So have a think about um, doing something a bit quirky. So this guy here, he's got a fist pump going on um cheesy grin um so you can actually be quite creative um you don't just have to go for the professional formal headshot at the um the slight angle offset and um uh, um and stick to the rules um you know you can be a bit quirky uh, and it might make it more memorable for people you know if you've got that quirky photo um i've seen people with earphones on and different things and you know all sorts of little quirky photos so think about how you can improve it so so you stand out um, the next big part from the headshot photo. So these are the kind of the three essentials, the headshot photo, um, the profile cover image or their head uh, or the background header, whatever you want to call it. And also the headline biotext. These are the kind of three key essential bits of information that we need to have um, nailed on the um, LinkedIn profile. Um, and if you're liking these tips, um, I'd encourage you to visit um, the uh, Leadif um, community. So it's over at leadif.com. Um, io forward slash school with a s k w o l um if you head over to leadith.io that's l e a d e t h.io 
forward slash S K double O L school. Uh, if you head over to that web address, that'll take you to the school community. Um, it's free. You can join in there. You can watch all the previous masterclasses. Um, you can book a call with me and you can run through some of this um, training again if you want, which is quite cool. Um, so we've done profile image. Let's look at the um, the headshot. So this is um, Mary. She's from uh, CEO at um, General Motors or the Ford Group. And you can see what she's done here. She's gone for a, a, a big slogan there, Our electric future is now, um, with a kind of cool, funky, modern uh, building there and a nice glow. So um, that's really cool. Um, so it stands out. Um, people will remember that. Um, and um, you can do stuff like that with this header. Here's another one. Um, this one's a bit more cluttered. I'm not a big fan of this one. So there's a lot of logos going on here. And the problem is here is when um, someone views this head header on a mobile phone, um, his profile image is going to um, grow to to the size of the header and encompass all of that text. So um, it's good if your desktop and all your visitors are desktop. I'm seeing a lot of traffic on mobile these days. Um, a lot of people commuting are on their phones. So um, just watch out. So what I always recommend is make sure the um, the left hand half of your headline banner is clear of any text or logos or things like that, because that gives it space for your profile photo to grow in that space. And um, yeah, um, obviously you've got this, um, this right hand side, which is really good, you can put text there, but don't, don't keep the text too small. I think this was a little bit too cluttered for me. There's a lot going on there. It's very busy. Uh, personally, I'd like to see a more minimalist approach with the, with the headline graphic, but um, you know, um, it's, it's different things for different people. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a look at where you can change your um, LinkedIn profile settings. And this is where you can get what's called a customized um, profile URL. So if you go to your LinkedIn profile page, there'll be an option here. You can I've highlighted it for you on the screen and you can actually go to edit your custom URL. So a custom URL is basically great because it helps people find you um, without having gobbledygook text. So it gives you a really nice, short, concise handle that you can use at linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash the handle name. So it's much easier to remember. So when you're typing it in Zoom chat calls or typing it out on an email with your link there, um, that becomes your personal link to your LinkedIn profile. So um, think about changing that. That's one of the kind of basic essentials that you need to be doing uh, with your LinkedIn profile. Um, creating an eye-catching headline. So this next bit is all about, you know, that headline. Think about your target market in mind. You know, what are their problems? What is the solution that you can bring to their problems? And when you can convey some clarity here, this is really going to help people to understand, yes, I know what Alex is about. I know how he helps people. I'm going to get in touch with him or, you know, words to that effect. So think of your headline as a brief introduction to your LinkedIn profile and who you are in general. It's like a summary that we're going to use. And there's um, a few different bits of like frameworks that we can use to, to create that um, eye-catching headline. One of the first ones that we um, typically use is this one. Um, well, sorry, these are the reasons why we need a, a great headline before we go into how we do it. Um, the headlines serve to attract people to your profile, okay? And they help others to understand the basics about you. And thirdly, they'll keep viewers interested in your business and encourage them to scroll further down into the details of the page, the um, the posts that you've, that you've posted recently and any um, pinned or um, content that you've got there um, and flagged up. Um, towards the top of your profile. Um, so something that you need to know about the headline, obviously we're limited to um, a certain number of characters and things. Um, so it's the bit of text that's located right underneath your um, personal profile picture on LinkedIn. That's what we call the um, headline text. I'm just going to see if I can switch over to a LinkedIn uh, tab. I'll take you to my profile page, actually. Uh, there we go. Just waiting for the computer to log in. I'll just do a, a screen share on a different window. Bear with me. As you can see, LinkedIn's um, stepping up its uh, security levels recently. Uh, this is purely because I accessed LinkedIn on my mobile phone last night and I had to go through this whole security process. So now I'm doing it on a computer. Um, I have to do it again. Uh, this one's great. You've got to turn the frog the right direction. I've never seen this one before, but uh, great. Security is uh, obviously linked in. There's a lot of AI accounts going on now. So people fraudulently using AI against its terms and policies with fake profiles. And um, it's important to make sure we're not um, 
yeah so here we go this is my linkedin profile and the headline bio right below my name you can see we've got um i go for husband father digital entrepreneur and social selling strategist and then i've got a little bit of a, a strap line that i would use there empowering uh it's gone <laughs> just wait for it to come back uh empowering businesses to conquer uh, linkedin and generate b2b leads and also my uh, another big thing is i'm christian so i always make sure that's clear on the profile as well oh we can see uh, gordon there on the live stream so that's um kind of the the headline text what we're talking about now it's important to make sure that that headline text is um uh, consistent and um, that it appeals to your target audience and i'm just going to go through and show you some ways that we can um think quirky things that we can do to kind of make that stand out so we're painting a picture of who you are and what you're about. Um, so the, the two ways that we go about doing this are, number one, um, imagine you, that you're talking to somebody new and you want to let them know um, what you're about in just two sentences. Um, that's that's a good way of thinking it. You know, If I was to introduce myself to someone, two simple sentences that explain the, 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 the headline information, what that would be. Um, the second way to do it is to use, um, think of it as a sign. Say, pretend that you're selling yourself to someone. So create something catchy. Um, and then we've got this, um, what we call the X, Y, Z formula. And this basically consists of using three different variables um, in a way that you can um, have an easier time creating your headline. And the three variables are to include is X, your ideal prospect. Who is your ideal prospect? Who is it that you want to be connecting with? You know, what does that person look like? And then we look at the why. So the why is the outcome that you provide. So what is this outcome? Where do you take people to? What is the goal? You know, what, what is that? Um, so think about that, what that might work. Um, so for me, it's all about, you know, for people generating high quality leads is the goal um, using LinkedIn and my ideal prospect. So if you if I really wanted to niche down, I could say my, my ideal prospect would be a, um, a SaaS startup, you know, um, for those guys in the tech space. Um, this this tool that I provide would really help them. And then the why is going to be what is the service or product that you offer that helps the prospect that helps X get Y. The, the ideal outcome so have a think about that i've got a couple of examples just to show you how that works in practice so here's one um, i help x do y by z so i help overworked executives your x's and i help them into um oh, uh, just gonna say hello to scott Walby, malcolm uh turn over overworked executives and successful business owners dm me to learn more and follow for daily content so there's a few extra things here and there's a hashtag gone in there as well um so that's one strategy um we've then got um another strategy here's another one um i love the lingo in this one i do z to help x do y so obviously if you're in the transformation space in terms of you know um uh this this is just great enabling enterprise companies so that's obviously your x um uh, and what is it that you're doing? You're optimizing business results through digital experimentation. I mean, for me, it doesn't say a lot what that actually does uh, and personalization. So, um, yeah, OK, optimizing business results through digital. It, it, there's a lot of long words there for me that 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 starts to confuse me when I see that one. Um, but you can mix and match it. So um, this one, you know, I got 151 professionals into high earning tech jobs within a year. You're next. Um, add, adding a bit of humor to it. That can really help as well. We've then got um, this next one here. Make sure that you're providing some sort of value with your headline. So if you can provide a bit of um, value in the headline, that's going to encourage people to, to connect with you. Um, so think about what that might look like for you. Um, how can you add value to what that other person's up to? In fact, this is what we talk about in every single message. Um, we, we, we ask people, you know, what, what is the value that you can add in, in all your outbound messages? Um, the training normally goes into the about section where we look at, you know, all the different things that you can write about in the about section. Um, think of it as a blank page where you can write everything about you. But most people, um, the headline um, graphic, the, the profile photo and the headline bio, they're the three main key things that you need to nail, get that sorted. And the rest will come in line, you know, but again, the about section is a huge bit of real estate that you can write, you know, 500 words, giving you a bit of a bio, a bit of a history. So, for those that like to read a bit more, you know, it might be worth having a, um, a nice readable summary there for them to 
um, look at that. It tells people basically who you are in a bit more detail. Um, it talks about how helpful you for prospects or recruiters to get to know you quicker. So that that'd be a good thing to fill out. And it also can help you to promote your business like you never before. So you can really craft something great out there. Um, earlier, I mentioned things like um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really good for helping you craft the XYZ um, headlines. Um, so you can actually use a prompt um, to, to create those. You could say, um, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm a whatever your job role is. Um, I help such and such target markets. And um, this is how I do it. And basically, can you create me? Well, the prompt is, can you create me um, uh, a LinkedIn headline bio? And that, that gives it the um, number of character count that it needs to be. I think it's 220 characters. Um, I can't remember exactly to the top of my head, but I think I've got it note, noted down on the notes here. But um, to however many characters, including spaces, is what you need to put in the prompt. And then it will spit back idea after idea of some really good um, prompts that you can use. So um, that's ChatGPT. Um, there's a bit more about that in the in the community. Um, follow follow the um, after the about us section, and you've written a story there. Obviously, that gets found by Google, um, so it can help you be found. So if people are, are searching for things and you've got some really good keywords in there, um, that's going to help you to rank in Google searches um, because Google does see LinkedIn as a bit of an authority. It's quite an established website now, so um, so that's one of the one of the pros and uh, reasons why we do that. Right. So I just want to show you some uh, tools to um, uh, improve. Um, what we're doing with um, images on this headline headline bio section. And then we're going to drive into some Q&A, um, see if anyone's got any questions um, that they want to um, chat to us about or concerns that they want to raise, um, any thoughts or ideas. Um, this is an interactive masterclass. So it'd be great to hear from you, see what you um, what your what thoughts are on these things. So first, I'm going to just share my screen again. We're going to take you to a few websites of useful tools that will just help you. Um, to um, create an even better profile. Um, so if you've already got head, um, a profile photo, we'll start with the profile photo. Um, snapper, S-N-A-P-P-R.com. So if you head over to snapper.com, um, within Snapper, you'll see um, you've got some options here and um, you can search for... Snapper basically connects you with photographers who can take photos for you. But what we're looking for is the linked in headshot tool. Try and find it. It's easier if you actually Google it. It comes up first time in Google. Um, just search for Snapper, LinkedIn. There we go. It's called a Snapper Photo Analyzer. I couldn't see it on the on the main page of their website, but it's a free tool, um, and it allows you to analyze your LinkedIn profile headshot. So. Are we allow happy for us to give um, Snapper access to our LinkedIn profile headshot? Yeah, we can allow. Um, it goes off and then does some um, wizardry using AI to work out um, um, whether your photo uh, is as good as it could be. Um, and watch this, it's pretty impressive. So here's the analysis. Um, so we're scoring um, 72 out of 100. And it helps us to identify kind of where are the weak areas in that photo that I could improve. Um, the smile, I mean, I've reached a perfect smile. I'm showing a few teeth, you know, um, nailed the smile apparently, which is really good. Uh, my jawline's bad. So this is to do with the shadows under the jawline and stuff. Um, so it always helps get a professional headshot photographer in um, to do this bit because they'll get you a, you know, a 100 out of 100 photo, which is what you want. Uh, squinch, it, does, uh, it wants a um, slight squint, narrowing of the eye height. So it wants me to um, squint a little bit more um, with my smile there to, to improve that score. And we go down composition. So in terms of the uh, what they call the zoom, how far we're zoomed into that um, headshot, and that's perfect. We've got the rule of thirds. Um, so if you're into photography, basically, if you split your screen into three columns uh, and three rows, um, you'll end up with two um, crossing points, uh, four crossing points on the photo. And the idea is to make sure um, with the rule of thirds is that your eye lands up with um, one of those cross points. OK, so you're always going to be off center slightly. You're never going to be straight in the middle of the photo. Uh, and that's called the rule of thirds. And apparently it, it when people see a photo that's composed um, to that rule, um, it, it makes it look really good. Um, so I got penalized a little bit with the background. So, um, yeah. 
that in terms of a professional headshot they don't like it because i'm using this um quirky um you know blue and white background effect um so i used to have a plain one um plain blue um so yeah think about what backgrounds might be better i mean it suggests here um have a professional backdrop um general rules you know can base put a perception to you first to ensure that it's um it is relatively bright uh, a bright color is great although light gray is also not bad option we recommend avoiding pure white so try to avoid the pure white as it looks a little unnatural secondly you should try to keep the background relatively uniform um, so there's not too much going on it can be distracting um, it's fine to be have a little bit of detail behind you uh, as long as your photographer uses a shallow depth of field which gives it that kind of blurry effect so yeah um bit of food for thought there um i've i've kind of gone gone against the rule there with my um quirky um patterned back backdrop um background um in terms of the editing um it tells you about brightness contrast sharpness saturation and the color temperature um so yeah you can um tweak all of that um and then um tells you how good you are on all the different elements so yeah if you're really clued up on on photography and photos um think about using this tool um snapper.com um it really really helps you now the next tool i wanted to share with you quickly i'm running out of time rapidly today is um photo feeler so if you search for photo feeler.com um it takes you to um, a website that basically ranks your photo based on um what other people think so your photo goes out there into the public domain and then people can then vote on how they feel um your photo um yeah so here's some of the previous ones you can see like um the, this photo at the bottom here um it's business photo that I uploaded wearing the same suit as all my other photos but it's interesting to see um with 107 votes um it achieved a 8.3 for competency a 6.9 for likable and a 8.1 for influential whereas um getting a professional headshot involved um so this was taken at fsb conference uh, many years ago in scotland um three years ago actually or so um i achieved a 9.2 uh, for competency so people thought that looked more competent um so it's obviously the background the professionalness of it really does help um so more people are gonna you know want to connect with me if i've got a professional headshot that's why it's so important to kind of look your best have a professional headshot um when it comes to to profile views so yeah that's kind of um, um a few tools there that i've used um the other one is pick of me pick of me dot i o i believe it is um, and this is a, a, a picture framing tool where you can upload the picture of you and it generates um, either different backgrounds. So I'm just going to upload a picture of me just so you can see how this one works. Uh, these are all free tools. Um, they don't, won't cost you anything, uh, which is great. That's the best cost. Um, headshot. I'm just searching for a headshot photo of me on a plain background. Um, there we go. Um, there's quite a bit of zoom on that one. So we'll. Uh, unfortunately there's nothing we can do about the zoom uh so go next it does this doing some magic so it analyzes the photo so you can say right what sort of canvas do you want it on do you want it to be a circle do you want it to be a square so you can actually automatically crop it if you want to crop it um and it's it basically goes through different trends so what's what's been trending at the moment you can choose pattern background, distracting pattern background. Um, you can add your Ukraine stop war um, colors to it as well, if you're a supporter of that, that thing. And then you can create magical kind of AI generated things. So it does some weird, really quirky, like 3D glasses. It looks like I'm wearing their glitch. Um, different borders, different effects. And um, yeah, I mean, these look familiar, like comic styly which is quite cool quite funky um tiktok specials so if you're doing a photo for tiktok or something you want to promote their brand um you can do that as well or there's some transparent ones so so have a look at those um, lots of different backgrounds um spots and uh, things there, there's the one that i use except i changed the color of it it's a bit more subtle on that one um but yeah have a play around with that that's called pick of me and um it's yeah completely free tool that ultimately pulls you out of the background and adds a bit of punch to whatever you're doing so uh, another one to check out um yeah so that kind of concludes the masterclass. i will just hop onto linkedin just see if there's any questions um in our um 
on the live video. So bear with me. Um, oh, yeah, lots of people on their uh, questions. So, uh, oh. so we've got um, Haram, um, any other tool which you can do some stuff without giving um, LinkedIn access? Um, any other tool which can do the same stuff without giving LinkedIn access? I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, it's like simply upload the photo and that will analyze. Um, yeah, Haram, I'm not, not quite sure about your, your question there, uh, but yeah, good morning. Great to have you with us. Um, Afria, thank you uh, for tuning in. Uh, loving your um, headshot photo. That looks really cool. Uh, good morning to Victoria. Victoria, I haven't seen Victoria for a number of years. Um, so good morning to you, Victoria. And also Stevie, um, great to have you with us. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Jacks, um, all saying good morning. Great. Uh, some really good interaction on the uh, on the uh, on the chat there um, today. But yeah, any other specific questions? Now is your time to get a question in. Um, hopefully this has helped you a little bit. Um, so just going to hi Gordon, fire away. Oh yeah, yeah. No, great, great, great session. Really enjoyed it actually. Um, you didn't mention the video uh, profile. Um, yes, that's on a mobile. Your, yeah, on the so, mobile. Yeah. What, what's your thoughts on that? Um, yes, um, obviously it's a feature that will help you to rank better on LinkedIn if you complete it. Obviously, you need to either pre-record the video or just upload it live through through your mobile. Um, but yeah, um, definitely very powerful. I th I tend to use ChatGPT as much as I can. So if it you could say, help me to script a concise 30 second video or however many seconds that um, LinkedIn allows you to put on that video. Um, but I, I think I've, I've just seen so many really poor quality ones. And that's why I always get a bit upset because um, they're really, really poor lighting and the audio is really not very not very clear but if you can do a nice polished one if it's a nice kind of brightish day facing the window or whatever uh, and speak with clarity to the lens not to the camera uh, not to the uh, not to the screen that you're looking at often people's eyes are, are taken off and, and that could be a bit of a distraction whereas if you're talking directly to the camera lens um, you've kind of got their attention and they've got you completely so yeah definitely video is very powerful um certainly yeah, give it a go. Uh, it's not something that I've worked up. No, yet, I've, but... I've, I've got it. I've got it on there. Oh, brilliant. I've brilliant. got it on the profile. So I was just because you haven't, have you? So I was just. No, no, I haven't yet. I was I just asking you, you know, somebody that clearly is all over LinkedIn um, and, uh, you know, what your thoughts are. I also like the fact that you've got your branding on uh on the zoom profile oh yeah yeah so How do you that, do that actually? that's vital so that's a free zoom plugin called warmly w-a-r-m-l-y warmly okay. um and it basically allows you to put in your time zone your you can put the weather in i've actually got um, my linkedin handle down the bottom corner i don't know which side it is for you guys but it's probably this yeah, side. i'm gonna do that that's um, great. um so you can have your linkedin handle but basically yeah you can have your little your almost your linkedin bio headshot all pulled off LinkedIn and a bit of a description and it it just sits there and it, it it's all done in Zoom. So if I change to um, maybe another camera or something just to show you, I'll just switch another camera on. I've got a rear camera, rear facing camera in the room here. Mm. See if it comes on. Doesn't want to How long have you been doing live? I've never done live. Um, so I've been doing live since, since uh, proactively from January um january showing up twice a week normally so i do a tuesday morning um a week God, so, oh, yeah so i have a 45 minute it's a huge discipline to get into most yeah. lives don't need to be that long um so I, my 45 one is a master class so it's more of a webinar more of a interactive thing um but that's a live that goes out every tuesday morning and then what i typically do is a um no more than five minute live on a friday so it's right at the end of the week um away from the tuesday and that's basically again a bit more engagement a bit more interaction and i tend to just do an accountability friday session where i say you know these are my stats these what I, this is what i've gained this week on linkedin i've achieved you know four or five new clients or whatever um and it's just a bit of an update um which is quite cool and um, they're the only two uh, sometimes i even drop the friday one um but but well, i used to do I, the reason i ask is i used to do a weekly wednesday morning 8 30 to 9 30 uh on um uh, as part of my facebook group um but i did it for over a year and i just got i just got tired i just got mentally because less and less people showing up and you think what you know why <laughs> why do you bother right. you know yeah. <laughs> 
but, uh, but no, no, that's um, like a discipline, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, because I've got um, a 13 week program, and a 13 week cycle. So building for it for that week. Yeah, you've got to put a couple of hours in to get the content. But once you've got it, when you get back to this 13th week again, the next quarter is there ready to roll. You haven't got to prep anything. It's all ready, um, and which is beautiful. Yeah. You've just got to interact with the new people that are on the call, yeah. um, which makes it a really effective um, strategy. Um, yeah. I'll just share this um, this one. This is the, the Leaders Together community that we've been building up. Um, it was a very private lockdown community to just paid clients, but we've actually turned it into an open um, community now. So anyone can actually join us. Um, it's where we put in some news, some tips, um, tricks that we're doing currently. Um, there's a bit of a leaderboard as well. So we've gamified the whole thing. But um, we're bringing marketeers, sales professionals together, um, and we're just basically educating them on LinkedIn trip tricks and hacks and different things um even if you're not a, a paid client you still get access to um, a lot of this content which um obviously you won't get access to the client only drop-in recordings because they are right. reserved for clients but you get access to the um stage one which is all about identifying your target audience so you can click through and um, watch those videos um, we do a, i've just done a new video on the story brand framework which is really helpful and ties in well with this profile um i mean session two today is all about this profile optimizing um there's some really good tips here there's a video to watch um which you can freely access as well you can also watch all the pre um all the previous sessions under the lead generation masterclass um so every session i've done since january is has been recorded and um, whatever you're into there's probably a session which kind of covers it off and then we've got events um so if you're a paid client you get access to me three days a week um with a, a client only zoom dropping call um, and you also get access to the, the linkedin lead generation masterclass here that's kind of open to all um but yeah we're seeing some really good traction on the on the channel now we're just starting to get momentum we've got 25 members on board really looking to grow and get it get it going so um feel free to um follow the link i'll leave a link in the zoom chat if you're interested in um getting along to that and learning more and um being cool. present um yeah. cool yeah well but, thanks but, yeah. and um um very engaging well done <laughs> thanks no thanks gordon great to have you on the call and um yeah i mean typically i i um if, if you're interested we have um a client um one-to-one -one, uh, we have a, a, a strategy session call um with be with people that have been to this and found them engaging and that just allows me to then focus um with you for about 45 minutes to an hour where we can focus on some hardcore lead gen stra um, strategies for your business and we actually look at you know your offer in a bit of detail um it's completely free um there's limited um availability in the diary but if you head over i'll pop a link in the chat if you're interested uh, leaders.io forward slash strategy um i think there's a little bit of availability maybe towards the end of the week if not it'd be next week now um but happy to have a call um to discuss discuss things further um i'll just stop the live stream for now um so thank you for everyone on the live stream for for tuning in i'm happy to stick around for another five minutes gordon if you if you if you want to chat about anything or if you've got to shoot off that's fine no no actually do you want to just have a quick look at mine while you've got yeah yeah definitely um, let, me, let me just um boot out all the um robot participants i'm actually the reason why i thought this is quite relevant is i'm doing a linkedin presentation tomorrow oh brilliant take tomorrow, these take these tips and strategies uh, away and you'll you'll blast there's, it there's, there's quite a bit that i know but clearly there's some little nuances that you have shared today yeah um, one thing i really quite useful one thing i omitted from the um presentation was uh creator mode so creator exactly. mode yeah, yes creator exactly. mode is a must um i need to add that into the presentation somewhere um but yeah, so that will allow you to do unlock your profile and do a lot more with it and create yeah. and do the lives and do other things and have hashtags, things that you talk about and stuff like that. But feel free to share your screen if you've got it up and up and running now. Oh, okay. Oh, a yeah, bit yeah. of an audit or yeah, drop yeah, your yeah. LinkedIn URL in the chat and I can have a look. Okay, let me just do that actually now. Uh, uh, right. So, um, right, let me just... I think so many people just get by and they just don't don't utilise LinkedIn. It's kind of a wasted opportunity, isn't it, um, yeah, within an yeah. organisation? Uh, absolutely. So something else that I do is I've also got my profile in another language. Oh, OK. Uh, um, um, you talked about the um, public profile. So mine is influencer marketing and membership that that is my full name so every time i'm posting something people yes. re i'm reminding them of the fact i'm an influencer marketing and membership specialist yeah uh, 
I have got the banner there. Um, well done. Interesting, interesting to see what you thought. Uh, the one before, funny enough, had the book on the left hand side, and then when I went and put the yeah, you realised mobile. Was, yes, <laughs> I'm just going to try and I'm just going to have a look up um, on the mobile now, just to see how it crops it. Um, Gordon. Glenn, there you are, influencer marketing. Beautiful, beautiful profile. Yeah, um, so it's just the, the word membership and author um, just get cropped a little bit. So if you wanted to just tweak that, um, they're the only words that you can bring in. Where's that? Where, what do you mean? Um, on the on the headline banner. Um, oh, membership and author. Oh, they do, do they? Yeah. So if I share my screen. I'll show you what it looks like on a mobile. Um, share. Can I? I've uh, got to go to screen sharing. Hopefully you can see my phone. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So you see that um, it's just, just cut off on the, uh, on the banner yeah, there. Yeah. On okay. The mobile. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Thank you. What, what, what you can find is that often, that small text is just unreadable on a mobile anyway. Yeah. You've got to think, um, yeah, it's a, it's, you've got to draw the line. Uh, even my own profile, I've got tiny text. I'm trying to encourage people to sign up to the masterclass, but, um, but yeah, yeah, in terms of, um, yeah. And you've obviously got the video, um, which you spoke about as well. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's that's good. Um, it's concise. It's to the point. Um, a bit of camera shake, a bit of camera shake there. I don't know if you can remove that from certain apps and things, but um, that was the only thing, a little bit of camera shake. But, but okay. no, it was fine in terms of the lighting and it looked professional. You've got the book in the background twice on the shelf. I, I saw that sneaked in there, which is good. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no, that's really good. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in terms of that, you've made use of the LinkedIn Creator um, plugin because that gives you this um, web link, call to action web link. Um, so I would, um, um, sometimes you can actually spell it out for people. So visit my website here in big letters. Uh, I know you're restricted with how many characters you can put in on that um, web link. Okay. But um, with mine, I've got basically... Um, my lead generation masterclass that's my go-to that's my call to action my lead magnet i want to drive traffic to that um so that's what i promote okay. rather than promoting just a naked um okay that's, that's a really good shout so, out okay um that's one thing um yeah um but no no it's all i mean that's that that's kind of the, the key thing there with the, with the profile professional headshot which you've probably got it'd be interesting if you put your your, your headshot profile through the um uh, snapper well, I already know photo feeler when you mentioned it, but I haven't yeah. heard of snapper. So that's snapper really is yeah. Uh, snapper's uh, a bit like I, I love that. I re I'm going to bring that into the session tomorrow. Oh, I, brilliant! I, People I, love it. I mean, because yeah, any really anything to idea. improve the improve it will will really help. Yeah. What, what one other thing just before we go is um, I also realised that having more jobs that you have on your profile even if they're short term has added my authority hugely so the fact yeah. i'm a, i'm a part-time lecturer even oh, though i only do a few days um a year actually means i've got the independent credibility the fact that i write for the london evening standard even though it's only a few times i've been able to add those to the profile yeah, yeah. and that has meant a huge amount of uh, of people looking at that so I guess for me all I would say when you're doing this again is let people think about not just the jobs they do full-time but some of the other volunteer jobs as well and put them yeah. as actual jobs uh, yeah. in the profile so that's been helpful for me yeah no I mean as you know the, the profile is just one step in the in the framework I'll show well, you the full, I'll show you the, the framework that we follow um unless you've watched previous master masterclasses when I, I normally display this in the previous masterclasses, but I just... I, when, when, when your thing appeared in my, um, in, in my outlook calendar, I thought, have I signed up for that? Or how did that happen? And I, did I sign up for it? This... Um, so basically what I'm, it's a little bit naughty. I'm basically a new connection that um, I make on LinkedIn. So any new connection, 
I'm basically driving them into my LinkedIn um, lead generation masterclass mailing list, which is basically a um, uh, it used to be done in MailerLite, but I now use something called Go High Level. So basically, all those connections automatically get enrolled if I've got their email address. So I see a connection request as legitimate consent to send them information about LinkedIn yeah. lead gen. Well, as it happened, it couldn't have been more timely, um, and it was it was very useful. But because I didn't recognise it, I thought I must have signed up for this. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, yeah. you know, as well as any anything that's in your Outlook calendar is a higher chance of yes, of yeah, people coming to it. So I used to do this when I used to do my round table events um uh, but one of the issues I had is uh, because I did it on Outlook calendar invite I'd of course in, the, everybody else can see the um see the email addresses of everybody so I, I never yeah. forget how to hide them so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean super uh, quick um obviously if, if we were going to have a longer chat i can dive into these strategies in a bit more detail with you but um yeah. yeah we look at the the target audience um do a bit of understanding there today was very much dipping our toes into personal profile optimization making sure that that speaks to the target audience and then the next biggest chunk of the of the system so i've actually got a, a software tool that automates um every bit of linkedin outreach so all the connection requests are automated um profile views are all automated we do about a thousand different profile views um, a month um, using the software and then we have this email outreach piece you know once you've connected with someone on linkedin let's get them into a funnel you know let's not lose those prospects you know you've you've worked hard to kind of get them um so let's kind of add value by um and i don't you know it's it's the it's being you know, you, you've got to make the call um, when it comes to, to doing that. Because some people in um, like the legal sphere would say, oh, no, GDPR, you shouldn't be opting people into that. But uh, yeah. it's down yeah. to your own preference in terms of how how you want to adopt that strategy. But mm. um, and video content marketing, that's all about creating, a, you know, 13, one to two minute pieces of video that can then be populated on the channel. Um, I've got my master classes, so I'm doing video content a little bit differently. And then having a system for capturing the leads is vital um, and linking it to a CRM to make sure leads aren't but but um but it's it's all part of a system. Unfortunately, I've got to shoot off, um, Gordon. It's been a pleasure to to I'll chat today. You, all the best. Um, I hope your session goes well. Um so is yeah. it tomorrow? Uh tomorrow evening. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, nice yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so yeah, great. Thank you for your time anyway, and uh really helpful. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, let's do that.